Hi, welcome to Weld.com. I'm Bo Wigington, and today we're talking about undercut and how to prevent it. So undercut is when you are welding and you cut out base material with the arc and it's not filled back in with the filler metal. Uh, this often happens in MIG and stick, in my personal opinion. It also happens in TIG, but today we're going to talk about how to prevent it with MIG and stick. So one of the most common ways that undercut occurs is that your amperage is going to be too high. So in stick, you might be running that electrode a little bit too hot. It's going to be heating up the base material too much, and it's going to be actually melting back out before it has a chance to fill in. So you might want to bump those amps down. With MIG, it might be either your voltage or your wire feed speed is too high. Uh, so that's the first thing most people say is you got to turn down that amperage. But there's a couple other things that might be affecting your weld. So another thing that might be affecting your weld is that your work angle is incorrect. You might be going a little bit too directly in. You might be aiming low. A lot of times you want to scoop up and give it time to fill back in. Another thing that might be affecting your weld is your travel speed. So how fast you are manipulating. If you're going too fast, you're not taking the time to let that filler metal fill in. So you might want to try to slow down your manipulations. Talking about manipulations, it might be that. Your manipulations might just be inconsistent. And sometimes you might be moving in a different pattern and not giving the same motion each time you go through. You want to make sure you're as consistent as possible. As one of my welding instructors told me, you want to pretend like you're a robot. So try to be as consistent as possible with those manipulations. We're going to be doing circular ease and we're going to be pausing up at the top. Pause pause you want to make sure you're giving it time to fill in at the top here so here we are again looking at the puddle as you can see we are going to be pausing up at the top we're spending more time up at the top making sure that the filler metal is filling in and we're not racing too fast because if you race too fast that metal you cut out with the arc is going to just leave that undercut so you want to make sure you're doing precise circular movements pausing at the top here now we're going to be moving on to our triangular motion as you can see i'm whipping out in front of the puddle moving back up to fill in pausing shortly to make sure we don't get that undercut and then we fill down so we're just doing these small triangles to make sure we are getting the penetration and then we're covering pausing to make sure we're not getting undercut on the top or bottom this is a very useful manipulation in my personal opinion i hope it helps you out as you can see here's our completed welds over here on the left we have our circular e movement where we paused at the top as we move over here these are going to be our triangles where we keep it nice and consistent pausing at the top and the bottom making sure we're getting plenty of coverage so when it comes to stick, we want to make sure that we are focusing on our angle. We don't want it to be too far down into the joint. We don't want to have too much of a leading angle. And we definitely don't want to be angled too far up. We want to make sure we have a slightly upward angle. We're giving it enough time to fill in after we're carving out that metal with the arc. So you just want to use the arc force with a slightly upward angle to fill in that undercut. As we were talking about, we want to make sure we have that slightly upward angle like this. We're keeping a nice, consistent travel speed. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is we don't want to get too close with the arc because if we do get too close, it can extinguish it just like this. Uh, so we want to make sure we're consistent with our travel speed, our angle, and the distance that we are from the work material with that arc. Here we are with our completed stick weld. As you can see, we kept it pretty consistent. Uh, there's no undercut. There's a couple times where we moved faster and slower, but overall pretty good. Uh, just make sure we're focusing on the angle, travel speed, and not getting too close with the arc. Another thing that might be affecting your welds is your field of view. You want to make sure you can see what you're actually welding, because how are you ever going to fix the problem if you can't actually see it? 
You want to make sure that you are always in a position where you can see the puddle and see exactly where that filler metal is going. If I can't see the arc, like if my glove is blocking it, you want to make sure you're getting your head tilted right to be able to see it. If I'm trying to watch it from this side, the nozzle is going to be in front of my view. Can't see that joint at all. I'm going to make sure we're tilting our head, being able to see clearly what we're doing here. Same goes with stick, as we don't, we don't want to be looking at this side. We want to be looking at this side. So we clearly see where we're going. Field of view is a huge part. Another thing that might be affecting your weld is not even your weld. It might be your base material. If you did not prep your base material correctly by getting all of the mill scale off, that mill scale actually melts at a higher temperature. Uh, this is most common in aluminum welding because the oxide on that aluminum is going to melt at a much higher temperature than the actual base material. So when you are going in to do a weld, you want to make sure that you're prepping your material, getting it as clean as possible, because a clean base material is going to make a clean weld. As you can see on this side, we have it nice and clean. This is going to be good for the weld to stick to. We don't have that mill scale to burn through. On this side, you can see all that mill scale, and this is going to be harder to weld through. So you want to make sure you get nice and clean, not dirty. Another thing that might be affecting your weld could be your consumables. Uh, if you're using a 7018 that's been exposed to moisture like this one, it's not going to burn the same way as a fresh one is. So you want to make sure you're checking the condition of your consumables before you use them as well. This also goes towards your MIG wire. Say that your machine is kept in a humid environment, you're not really keeping it as clean as you possibly can, that wire could get corroded as well, and that could cause problems in your weld, like undercut. Hopefully these tips have given you a little more insight of what could be causing your undercut, and hopefully it'll help you fix it. And if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out here, leave a comment down below with things that have helped you battle undercut. Also, if you've not become a member over at weld.com, there's forums where you can ask questions just like this and plenty of people will reach out trying to help you. So until next time, we'll see you out there. Mm -hmm.